Welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. I'm so excited today, Jess. Oh, good. Why are you so excited? We got a doctor in the house. Doctor Ooh. in the house. Hello. Hi, Dr. Patel. How are you guys? Our, our first uh, return guest. Yeah, that means that we might be doing something right, yeah, I hope. Are, I think you are. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. just trying to give us a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back, Dr. Patel. Thank you so much for having me. Back. For those who have not been with us before, Dr. Patel is a movement disorder specialist at Ohio Health here in Columbus, Ohio. And um, how long have you been practicing? I've been out of my fellowship since 2014, 2016. Okay. Um, so six, six years now, seven okay. years, going on seven. Great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we had a really great um, conversation with you a few months back and wanted to bring you on because we definitely have more questions. I'm happy to be here. And the one that we're going to talk about today um, is really around the standard or lack thereof um, I don't know, standard of care, standard of prescribing, standard of whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I, this, this topic will be about. So I have a group of about 15, uh, mostly young onset, but women all across the U.S. that we randomly kind of found each other. And we, um, we t connect through text and ask each other questions or give each other support. And we st I started seeing like the trend of everybody says something different about, I'll just pick carbidopa levodopa. Mm -hmm. So one says that their MDS told them to do this. The other one said they not to do this. Then like literally there was five of us having a conversation and we all had something different to say. Right. Why is that? That's actually, uh, so a lot of it backed up into Parkinson's itself. So a lot of reason I got inter or interested in Parkinson's myself is that I tell my patients, I was like, I think I have a little bit of ADD. Like I, I can't focus on one thing. And the thing that I like about Parkinson's is that it is so individual, mm -hmm. right? It is not a cookie cutter disease by any means. And everyone is so different. And so when it comes from the disease itself being different, the symptoms that people have are different, um, the way they respond to medications are going to be different. Everyone's going to be on their own different cocktail or regimen and what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's the first thing. Um, and then when it comes to medications like carbidopa levodopa, um, it is also going to be based on, on how sensitive people are to, to the medications and to mm -hmm. the side effects. Um, you know, there are people who cannot, for by any means, take as soon as they take a yellow immediate release, they get very nauseous and, okay. and they can't tolerate it. And so they may have, although it works for them, but because of the side effect they experience, they may have to be on a controlled release pill or something like that. Um, or they, they have to take it with food, not without food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I tell my patients, for me, treating Parkinson's is quality of life. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I don't want you to be dependent on a pill um, being like, oh, I just ate. I can't take a pill or, oh, I took a pill and now I have to wait to eat. Like your life shouldn't revolve around that. Right. You're doing a lot more. So you have to like revolve life around uh, or just just take the pill. I know I start off with three times a day and then increase as needed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have basic standards. I think everyone knows. I was in gonna terms say, of... but like, is there like a even like a list? Like, I would I would even like to document for myself of, you know, here's the things that you could, like, if you feel this, try this. Or, mm -hmm. um, like, my one friend said, she she does better with her exercising. She boxes if she takes um, a pill before she goes to exercise. Right. And but then. I think her MDS said not to do that or that was over medicating, but she's like, but I felt good. And so we all are all telling her, we're like, no, that's what we were told to do that. So right, it's like, right, isn't there right. like a, <laughs> a pamphlet? <laughs> yeah. Like, There's, tell us what to uh, do. Fortunately, I do give, uh, you know, I have sort of a frequently asked question sort of thing yeah. that uh, anytime I'm diagnosing a patient with it, I give that to them right mm -hmm. away that has my tips and tricks to the disease and regarding medications or if you're experiencing this, let me know. We could talk about this being an option to try to alleviate that. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would be like, I think it would be fine if she's takes the next one. You know, I have patients who, well, you know, on a Friday or Saturday, I don't go to bed at nine or 10. You know, uh -huh. I may be up later. I may go out to dinner. Is it okay if I take an extra dose to get me through dinner that I normally don't do during Bar the week? Hours. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, so I, I, have like, to, I think that's I have fine. To do that. uh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. If you're going to be out. I'm, yeah. If I'm going to be out later than like nine or 10. Yeah. yeah. If I don't, if I don't take it, I always have a pill in my pocket. Huh. The thing to be wary of is to make sure that whatever it is, and I think probably what her doctor was trying to say is you want to be as regimented as possible because your brain yeah. wants to, your brain is going to depend on dopamine, right? And and it needs to know um, when it's getting its dopamine. It's lacking dopamine. You have Parkinson's. You take the pill. You get your dopamine. The brain's happy getting its dopamine, but then it's expecting it regularly, routinely, and then when you go, oh, one day I took it just three times, one day I took it four times, one day I took it twice or whatnot, that's whenever you get these fluctuations. And that's mm-hmm. when the brain doesn't know when it's about to get dopamine. And then it gets it and it hadn't gone it for so long. And then it gets this surge. And that's really when people start getting side effects and fluctuations and dyskinesias because mm-hmm. it was the brain was used to some steady state and then it wasn't getting it. Okay. Um, so that makes sense. So regimented as possible, but if needed, she's going boxing, whatever, a couple times a week or what have yeah. Or you're going out on a Friday night, mm-hmm. and you're going to be up later, and you know you're using up that dopamine store, and uh, you're going to need an extra dose to get you through. It's all symptom control, so that yeah. once in a while is okay, but ideally, yes, you probably should, from her I'm assuming the doctor wants her to be as regimented yeah. as possible. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just that because it's not a cookie cutter disease, which is another reason why, I mean, even in terms of, we don't have a great animal model for this disease yet, Mm -hmm. right? Because, um, in research phases, whenever they come up with certain treatments or they think that, uh, this medication works in trials with animal models, it doesn't translate to humans because Mm -hmm. the human Parkinson patient, everyone is so individual that it's not like you could standardize every single patient to a thing. Which is what's unique and frustrating about yeah. the disease. It's it's well, exciting I mean, as well as frustrating. I think it's even frustrating too, um, the lack of standardization. Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, lack there of when it comes to when people are diagnosed. Because again, I mean, I know it's even difficult for people to get diagnosed. Um, but when they are diagnosed, what they're told, what they're given, it's like... Can something like that ever be standardized? Um, and if so, who does that? Is that like oh. National Institute of? N- yeah, I mean, it, it all comes. From, yeah, it's it's not. It's um, you know the the way it's making, presented. And, I don't know. I'm just right. making stuff up. <laughs> we know also that in terms of when a movement disorder specialist is is diagnosing, mm-hmm. um, and and the way we approach it in terms of the 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 way you tell patients for. The way you're going to approach it, I think, is different from yeah. it's different from person to person. It all comes down to how we were trained, or where we trained from, who we were trained under, how we were taught to do it. Um, it's it's just so variable, mm-hmm. um, and and the the idea is hopefully that patients do take that information. You know, I I have my patients, I diagnose them, and then I know no matter what I tell them after I said you have Parkinson's. They're going to walk out of the room and forget 95% of the things mm-hmm. that I told them. It's gone. Mm-hmm. And it's important to get that patient back in in three or four weeks. Let it sort of settle in. Let them Google, because they're going to do it anyway, yeah. even though you tell them not to. They're going to. Uh, let them do all that. Let them get it out of the system, do, do all the research, then get them back in for a session of just, all right, give me your questions now. Mm-hmm. Wait, let's just talk. We don't have to do anything else but just... I know it settled in now a bit. Mm-hmm. Let's let's now talk. Yeah. And it's important to have that conversation, I think, at a separate visit yeah. from the diagnosis visit. But it's it's sad that not like it, like there's not a higher something telling yeah. every doctor like this is you have to have this follow up. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. don't you think? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, I'm I mean, I, that. no, it's all confusing. I think, but, but I think, I think medicine no. in general is. I mean, it's all like, yeah. Like, right. Yeah, some doctors treat flu with IVs, and some tell you go and drink water. Right. You know. Right. I mean? But I mean, like, I I was thinking about it. Like, for if you're diagnosed with type one diabetes, like I don't I don't know of like what their process is, but I've just I've heard bits and pieces that it sounds like more. If you're diagnosed with type one, you do this, you come back, you learn how to do the shot, you do this. Like, there's like a 
Mm-hmm. But there's Process. a senior diabetes like that. I think what Dr. Patel's reiterating is that Parkinson's isn't, there's no standard. No, but, but I get that. But even what I'm saying, like, if it's because it's so, like, unknown of certain things, even just to having a standardized, like, you have to have a follow up appointment mm-hmm. 30 days later. Yeah, yeah. Why isn't that a like standard a thing? thing? Yeah. yeah. You know? And what yeah, and it really is. What shouldn't happen is doctors say, Take as much car relief until you feel better. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how many times I've heard of take people this saying, and tell me "Yeah, how I feel. people getting prescriptions and the doctor saying, take as many until you feel normal.'" And next thing I, you know, next thing I knew is, you know, I know people that were taking it and had they were taking more than I was, and they had di- been diagnosed like three, uh, like three months. And I was yeah. like, "Whoa, you're taking way too much yeah. medicine." And I think it's it's also it's it's evolving, I and mean, we we continue to learn more and more about the disease to start implementing certain standards. Mm-hmm. Um, Take DBS, for example. Um, DBS for Parkinson's, for many, many years, it was labeled as an advanced treatment for Parkinson's, right? right? That word advanced was in FDA guidelines in terms of when to be considered a candidate for DBS. And we knew, and more and more DBS was coming out, that actually getting it done earlier may Mm -hmm. even be more beneficial to patients. Um, And that just wasn't, we didn't know that until it was around for longer, we're seeing it more, research more. So now, FDA, I think it was 2015, I believe, that um, FDA removed the word advanced in terms mm-hmm. of a uh, diagnostic criteria for Parkinson's. It's now a treatment option for Parkinson's disease, mm-hmm. not advanced Parkinson's, just Parkinson's disease. And I think, I, I feel that that is somewhat more standardized in terms of when, for example, I use, and most people I believe use, a rule of four. You want to have the disease for four years. Mm-hmm. The reason being is that there are a lot of mimics of Parkinson's that in the mm-hmm. beginning, uh, everyone may look the same, but it really isn't until that four or five year mark that Parkinson's disease starts doing its own thing. The other ones start doing their own thing. Like it's, what? Like what can you? So like, for example, if someone has, say someone is Lewy body dementia mm-hmm. and initially their memory issues may not be too bad mm-hmm. and they may actually even be responding to levodopa and it may look like they have Parkinson's. And then a couple of years later, all of a sudden, why are you hallucinating on just mm-hmm. a low dose of levodopa that shouldn't happen if you just have Parkinson's? Mm. And that starts happening. Or someone with PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy, all of a sudden, like What's they progressive supranuclear palsy. Mm. It's, a, it's a type of atypical Parkinson's that those people initially also may respond to levodopa, but they have a lot of falling. They fall all the time, mm-hmm. particularly backwards. Um, and those patients may initially look the same, but they may eventually you realize, no, this is not Parkinson's, this is that, or mm-hmm. multiple system atrophy, another one, similar situation. Initially, they all kind of look the same, but then, so you need that, you need, because mm-hmm. it's a proof of Parkinson's disease. And because we don't have a diagnostic blood test or something like that, where it's a clinical diagnosis, you have to, you have to have that four year mark. You have to have you know, four months of motor fluctuation where you get a response to your medications, but then that medication's wearing off. It's mm-hmm. not lasting, and that up and down is happening for four months. That's bothersome for a patient, four hours in a day. So I use my, that's my 444. Huh. Um, so if you meet that criteria, four years of disease, four months of motor fluctuations that are bothersome for you, four hours in a day, I'm now planting the seed mm-hmm. in terms of, hey, we may want to start considering this. There are still other medications or medications that are coming out constantly. There are new medications and research that are coming out um, that may also be an option for you for treatment, but I'm at least starting to introduce the topic. Um, And those sort of things, and that that prior to 2015, that conversation wasn't happening with with patients. um, And they were waiting much longer before considering GBS. Um, And so, those sort of things are starting to become somewhat more more standardized, but it really is just, it it it's surprising. Still, we know a lot about the disease, mm-hmm. but there's so much still unknown um, that well, makes standardization hard. What were you saying? There's the hasn't been a new there's drug a, out since. Oh, that yeah. When I was doing the my research on the number of drugs, yeah, like there's really yeah. only 26 drugs out there for Parkinson's. Probably. But they right. really only fall into six category mm-hmm. groups. And so when I like was breaking it down for myself in that, it's like, I know there's a lot of research still going on, but it's crazy that there's yeah. not 
it's it's like not, there's not enough. i don't know like and yeah. part of it is that it, it is that again since we don't have those animal models there's some medications that look so promising and then whenever you start doing the trials and implementing these medications to patients across the country and different types of patients mm -hmm. and then you sort of try to make it more broad and all of a sudden oh this, this it's not it didn't work out it didn't work yeah. Um, and it's a shame because there's so many that look so promising, mm -hmm. um, chemically or bio biochemically, pharmacologically, it makes sense. It should work. Yeah. Um, but the human body with Parkinson's is just not the case. And, and so there are, there's, yeah, I'd say that's probably about right. There's, there isn't many. Yeah. So on that topic, what, mm -hmm. what? Is there anything coming down the pipeline that you're excited about, or anything that you think is going to be groundbreaking or um, being introduced? About that you think groundbreaking. There is so there's by next year. Hopefully, I think it's now just finishing FDA approval. Um, is going to be a 24 hour levodopa infusion. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we have a duopa, which is a 16 hour infusion through a peg tube of carbidopa levodopa. Uh, this is going to be subcutaneous. You do yourself. Um, like insulin mm -hmm. um, or like like type 1 diabetics who have insulin yeah. pumps all day long. It's going to be that sort of thing uh, with uh, levodopa um, that's been very, very promising uh, in, mm. in clinical trials and, and should should get approved. Um, I've I've been following that one. Um, I think the the negative things that some people have reported, especially if it's older patients is, um, because it's subcutaneous, you may have some skin reactions. Okay. And if older patients have kind of more frail skin. Mm -hmm. That being said, even with having skin issues, people didn't want to come off of it. Mm. Right. They they got so much benefit from it that they really? didn't want. They they would deal with the skin issues. Nice. Uh, but that's something to be aware of. Infections. Yeah. Like that. You have to be careful. Yeah. Um, but that's probably the next latest one that's going to be coming down. Um, that um that i'm aware of cool yeah nice well that's that's all i had for my standard Your standardized standard. <laughs> questions um yeah but thank you again for coming on of course this my pleasure great. anytime um it's it sucks to know that there is no standard <laughs> care. but like you said parkinson's is not it's not a standardized a, disease yeah standard no. disease great for us right <laughs> yay um Thank you, Dr. Patel, so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate you uh, allowing us to ask all these wonderful questions. So amazing. <laughs> In our last 30 seconds, I'll leave you with this. Because Parkinson's is not a cookie cutter disease, there is not a cookie cutter or standardized way to treat the disease. So what works for me might not work for another person living with Parkinson's. At the end of the day, it's up to us, the one living with Parkinson's, to constantly document our symptoms and our side effects, and as always, consult with our doctor. Thanks for tuning in.